So think for a minute, what is happening when you make a pruning cut? What is the tree communicating and what are you communicating to it? Well, in nature, things can happen. Wind can come, um, things, other branches from other trees can fall down and knock off limbs off of a tree. And trees are equipped to have that signal tell them to begin to do some new growth. Well, when it comes to a backyard orchard like this, we wanna partner with the tree to move in a direction that's gonna work for the tree and for you. And so all you're really doing is you're training the tree. You're not killing the tree, you're not chopping the tree down. You're initiating the uh, secretion of a hormone within that tree, telling it, oh, hey, time to grow a branch in this direction. You know, divert growth hormone to bud number 22 on limb, whatever. And so that ends up growing these branches in a direction that you're gonna be happy with. Because ultimately, if a tree isn't doing what you want, you're probably gonna cut it down. So you really are partnering with the tree when you're making these pruning cuts. It's a very natural process. It happens in nature all the time. And it allows the tree to also create some sort of new growth, which has healthier leaves. They're not as spent. And so it ends up being, a, in many cases, a very healthy thing for the tree as well. Okay, so I'm back out here the next day and I am <laughs> had to grab a couple of the other tools that I got. Um, I got this thing Corona calls a dual link, but uh, similar to my Craftsman uh, cutting, gear my craftsman um, loppers but the nice thing about these is that they're extendable so sometimes when you're trying to reach in you're trying to make a very precise cut and the longer out that those things are the harder it is to put a real precise cut on so I like that I can use these up close but then can extend them if I'm having to get a little bit of reach so excited to also use this little um, lever up here that's similar to my craftsman's as well um, the cutting head is a lot larger and I'm, I'm curious to see how these stack up uh, this creates this like compound action. It's like a compound lever, I think is what you will call it. And makes the cuts really, really manageable. You don't have to be um, as far out with the length of the arms in order to have that cutting power at the head. So that's pretty cool. And then looking closely at, especially these crazy nectarines, I'm dealing with some really serious wood over here. And so I'm gonna be using this uh, pruning saw probably on a number of these branches if they're getting in the way that are probably even a bit too big for the, for the set of loppers. So excited to try these out as well. Okay, so I just cut off this gigantic nectoplum branch. And the main reason I did that, this is a little bit of a thinning cut um, that I did. So down here, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna put this giant branch down. Down here is this mid-pride peach. And this peach got absolutely destroyed this summer with its fruit set. It broke two of its main scaffolding branches and is being shaded out here by this nectoplum. So what I'm trying to do here is to cut out some of the vigorous growth of the nectoplum to give this little mid-pride peach a chance to grow up. Um, that's another reason, by the way, I don't think I mentioned. One big reason why you should prune your trees is because the eventual fruit set can end up breaking branches. So you thin fruit in order to prevent that, but you also shrink the size, the length. If you notice these long wispy branches, imagine these things loaded down with fruit and how that's going to put so much pressure on the rest of the tree. And so in addition to thinning fruit, I make sure to prune these branches, you know, even two thirds back so they end up being a lot more sturdy, the structure is. Okay, so this is the space between two plantings, between our uh, nectarines and also our peach uh, planting here. And so what I'm gonna try to do here is to clear up this space in between the two. I wanna be able to 
walk through by not having to push through too many too many branches. So I'm just gonna come through here and start cutting away. Let's we'll see how quickly this, this can get cleaned up. All right, easy as that. Just two minutes of cuts. And now I've got a way to be able to walk through this grouping, which is really important. Wow, I made a ton of pruning cuts to those uh, nectarines and the nectoplum and the peaches. Look at all of these. Can you even see all of the stuff that I cut off of these trees? It's crazy. Um, look down here, even in this walkway here, how much uh, stuff there is and how those trees are really, if I can get out of the sun, you can see that these are a lot more balanced. They're not just growing in every direction. They're at a height where if they do fruiting wood, I'm gonna be able to go and pick off of these heights, which is really good. Now I wanna show you probably the easiest pruning cut um, compared to a couple, a little bit complex with those nectarines. I'm gonna show you a very easy one. And that's here on this jujube over here. Um, I wanna uh, create space for this long jujube beneath the lee jujube. And so I'm gonna clean this uh, grouping up a little bit and I'm gonna put this here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this Lee jujube is hanging over the top of this long jujube, and I want the long to be able to grow up here as well and work in this multi-planting. Hey, kiddo. You wanna grab a couple of these jujubes? Cause we're gonna be pruning this. Okay. Here, grab some of those. Here, pull all the ones off, pull them all off. I mean, is there an ice cream truck coming? We don't eat ice cream and got jujubes, cheers. So what I'm doing is I want to create, open up this space for this uh, long jujube to be able to grow up into its kind of hemisphere. So I'm going to make a pruning cut right here. What's hemisphere? That means half of a circle. Half of a circle? Yep. Here, here's some jujubes. Grab them off of there. Now these jujubes have some nasty thorns on them. Guys, I need your help. Okay. So this creates a lot of space for this long to grow up in this area over here. We may cut it back a little bit further if we need to, but this is looking okay for now. Um, yeah, usually you, wanna, usually you wanna do your pruning cuts after your fruit has been harvested, but we're harvesting it right now, so <laughs> this, is, this works in this case. This cherry tree, I'm, I'm doing really no, very little pruning on here, as you can see. Well, this one's a little bit sun-stressed. This mini royal or royal lee, go to whichever this one is. You notice that from the last pruning that I did, these have had very little bit of vigor. And so that's really what we're trying to contain versus these nectarines that you saw me taking this kind of vigor off. Uh, these cherries have pr produced very little vigor. In this case, just, you know, three inches, four inches, six inches of vigor versus three, four, six feet of vigor on this crazy nectarine. Look how thick those calipers of those branches are. So, yeah, these cherries really, with all of them, even with my Royal Rainier over there, did very minimal, a lot of tipping just to, again, get more of that branching but this cherry is ready to rock. I just came through in a few minor tips. If you're not uh, yet subscribed to the Busy Gardener channel, would love for you to do that now. Hit that subscription button, hit the notification bell, like this video, because that makes me feel oh so good, and do it. If you have questions, put them in the comments. Let me know, how's your pruning going? Have you already pruned? I'm hoping that you have, so you don't run into the issues that I'm running into today. Um, seriously, July is a better month to be doing this than late August. Really, if I waited a couple more days, it'd be September. But I appreciate you tuning in. Whether you've got one tree to prune in your orchard or 500, until next time, stay busy.